I've loved art since I, since I was three. I can remember somebody asked me what I was gonna do when I grew up and I was like, I'm gonna be an artist and I'm gonna draw trees. <laughs> and, and not much has changed in that. Um, still working with landscapes. Uh, it is all of that that attracts me. Um, and then I went on, I took art all the way through high school, majored in, in college, worked as a teacher for quite a while. And then I switched careers a little bit and went into adult education and administration for a period of time. And then realized how much I missed my art. And so I just started taking continuing ed classes and realized that printmaking, which I loved in college, was suddenly less toxic. We weren't using all the mineral spirits and everything else. So it was, a whole, it was like learning all over again. So I just delved right into that and been doing that now for more than 15 years. The way that I approach things is I, I take a lot of walks. And so I take my iPhone with me or whatever I have, just a camera. And something will be interesting to me. So I'll, I'll stop, take a picture, maybe do a quick sketch. Then when I come back to the studio, I look at them. I've been using some some of the uh, photographs from years past, I'll go back through things and I'll do a quick sketch, see if I like the uh, composition. And then I'll take that and put, start working on whichever technique in the Intaglio family, whether it's etching or dry point or you know, uh, whichever technique with the aqua tint uh, sort of meets the image. And then for me, it's all, with all the imagery, it's really about emotion that some of my work that I don't feel like works as well, it's really because I don't think my heart is totally in it. Mm -hmm. And the other ones uh, that do work, I think people have an emotional response to it. They feel like they can walk into the place if it's a more realistic or if it's a more abstract, sometimes people just pick up on the feeling of the color or the feeling of the... I think part of it is what attracts me will certainly be, be pushed by my emotions while I'm walking. So whatever's gonna attract me is gonna be related to that. Um, that experience. But once I stop that and I start just doing the etchings part, it, they, the etchings will take a life, the plates will take a life of their own. And so when I'm playing with that and working on a plate, um, you know, different, different emotions might be popping up, different things are going on, I'm thinking about whatever is happening. And I think that that gets imbued in, into, the, into the print. I just really love spending my time doing this. and. Uh, I look at, you know, I go off to a gallery or I see some prints that, I, you know, technically I know must have been amazing to make. Well, I just started experimenting with color, but being able to do the olive pay, I've been easing in on that for five or six years now. Olive pay is where you take the ink and in one, just one section of the plate you would put a yellow and you would wipe that in and then another section you might do orange. Um, but you do it individual color so that the plate runs through the press only once. So it's, for me, it's almost like a painting to do that. I do that. I don't plan it out ahead of time. I put out my inks and I intuitively look at what I want and, you know, go from there. I put one color down and then I see what I think might be another good color with it and move in that direction. So I, I um, was looking for a place to, to print and I've always admired, I followed Peregrine Press for years with what they were doing with their shows or activities. I finally worked up the courage to apply because um, it's a 30 member cooperative and so there's a membership group and you apply. There's not often a lot of openings um, because once people are in, they tend to stay. And so I got lucky one year, probably it's at least 10 years now, um, where a couple members were leaving so I was able to apply and become a member. And I've been active with that ever since. I'm currently the treasurer and have been a co-president and um, but it's great to be able to have such a, a community of experts and people who are really engaged in the same similar processes mm -hmm. to be able to talk to and, and learn from each other. And even though the membership changes over time, that same spirit, you can't be a, a printmaker alone. You really, printmaking is one of those communities where because you have shared equipment, mm -hmm. um, people really do um, give, do a lot of give and take. Mm -hmm. um, it's very much a community. For things I'd like to be doing, um, I keep wanting to do big. I love doing some small things, but I keep wanting to do four or five in a row of big 18 by 24s and have them all speak to each other and, and go in that direction. I, I would love to do There's, It's funny, there's not anything in my life where I like to be technical. I skipped chemistry, 
you know, I, I didn't do any of that. But there's something about this many-stepped process where things take on a life of their own and there's surprises every inch of the way. If I draw, I totally forget the things that reverse sometimes. So I'll get a, something on a plate that I just love and then I print it and I think, what happened? And I realize that it's the reverse. Everything, so you have to think in reverse and then you have to think about, you know, there's so many different variables. The pressure of the press, how damp is your paper, you know, is the plate clean enough, you know, how did you ink it, what kind of ink did you use, all of those variables are part of the process that I love the fact that I can't control it totally, um, and these fabulous surprises, sometimes I printed something, then I was like, oh, I hate it, and three days later I'm like, oh, actually that's pretty good. <laughs>